Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus conquered everything. He whooped everything. He overcame everything. He rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He spoiled principalities and powers. He made an open show of Satan and all of his cohorts. He defeated sickness, disease, worry, depression, and fear, poverty, and lack. Glory to God. He disarmed it. He nailed it to the cross. Glory be to God. He took away all our excuses for being defeated. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, there is no temptation that is taken man, that is not common to man, but God with the temptation will make a way of escape. Jesus got a way out, a way of escape. He's the solution and answer, amen. He's the antidote, amen, the remedy to all mankind's crisis. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, in the world, you're going to have test trials and tribulation. But he said, be a good cheer. Why? Because I've conquered them. I overcame them all for you. Hallelujah. Glory. He did it for us. Hallelujah. He's the captain of our salvation. He's our redeemer. He's our refuge, our king. He's our intercessor, our advocate, our mediator. He's our wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Glory be to God. And it's in him that we live and move and have our very being. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Glory be to God. And I'm telling you, he's committed to our well-being because he said he'll never leave us, never forsake us. He'll be with us to the end. And while he's with us, he informed us of what he'll do. In Romans 8, verse 31, he said, if God be for you, who can be against you? Oh, the Lord is not only for you. He's not only with you, but the greatest of all, if you're born again, he's in you. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, if that same spirit, amen, that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, if he dwelleth in you, he will quicken your mortal body. Glory be to God. Amen. He's in you to quicken you, to make you alive, to minister more of his abundant life that he came to give. All you got to do is cooperate and participate with him. How do you do that, Pastor? Amen. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavily laden. And what will you do, Jesus? I give you rest. How you going to do it, Jesus? Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn how I whooped the devil. Learn how I overcame depression, sickness, disease, poverty, and lack. Learn how I defeated it all. Learn how I rose victorious. And learn how I'm seated at the right-hand side of the throne of God, making intercession for you. Learn what I'm doing for you at the Father's right hand. Woo! That's how you co cooperate with him, is by learning of him. Mm, glory to God. Oh, as you can see, we're already excited and off to the races with this word. Amen. It doesn't take much. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. To get me excited. All you have to do is bring up Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Just bring up Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen, 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 amen. Well, praise the Lord. I want to welcome you out to our word encounter hour tonight. Amen. Where we're going to have an encounter with the Lord through his word. Amen. Glory to God. If you're going to have any dealings with God, it's going to have to be through his word. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. See, you can't separate God from his word. Amen. And the Lord originated this setting. Amen. And he told us to name it Word Encounter. He said, this is the setting that I've arranged for my people to have an encounter with me 
through the word for a change of story. Every man, everybody in the Bible who had an encounter with the Lord through his word, he changed their story. Woo, glory to God. Peter, amen, had been out fishing all night in Luke chapter 5, verse 3 through 7. Amen, hadn't caught anything. And Jesus told him, he gave him a word, go launch out into the deep, let down your net for a draw. Woo, some of you, you've been having bad business experiences. Amen, it seems like you're in a drought and a dry season. But I'm telling you, Jesus going to give you a word tonight. To bring an end to that drought and that dry season where your career and where your business is concerned. Glory be to God. He going to make a, a way in your wilderness. Amen. He going to make rivers in your deserts. He going to end that dry season tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Peter, amen, offered an excuse. He said, Lord, we've been out there all night. Ain't caught anything. But nevertheless, woo, glory to God. At your word. We're going to go do what you say. And the Bible said when they had done this, they enclosed a great number of fishes so that their nets began to break and their boats began to sink. Woo! Glory be to God. All you need is a word. Amen. And that'll be the end of your crisis when you do what Jesus say. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 Amen. He said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto them a wise man which built their career, their business, their relationships, amen, upon the rock. And when the rain descended, the floods came and beat up against it. What happened? It fell not. Why? Because it was built upon doing what Jesus said. That's the only way we're going to be exempt from this world's crisis is to do what Jesus said. Woo! In Mark, amen, chapter uh, 9, verse 31, he said, uh, Mark 13, verse 31, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will remain forever. In Isaiah 55, verse 11, amen, he said, no word from God will return to him void. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, he said he watches over his word to perform it. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 10, verse 35, that the scriptures cannot be broken. Woo, glory be to God. And then in Romans chapter 10, verse 11, all that put their trust in Jesus and do what he say, they will not be made ashamed. Your appointment with disappointment will end when you get a word from Jesus and do what he say. Glory to God. He'll turn your mourning into dancing. Woo, you're weeping in the rejoicing. Glory be to God. He'll do it. I'm telling you, he'll do it. Amen. No one who got a word from him and did what he said. Amen. Glory to God. Story stayed the same. He changed their story and he made them a story to be told. And he'll do the same for you. Why? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in John chapter 6, here's your guarantee right here. John chapter 6, verse 37. Oh, I quote that, read that every day. Amen. Why? Because I remind myself of Jesus' commitment to me. Amen. John 6, 37. All that come to me, in no way will I turn them back. And then I read verse 38 and 39. Amen. I came not from heaven to do my own will, but I came to do the will of him that sent me. And this is the will of him that sent me. All that he's given me, I shall lose nothing. Have you been given to Jesus today? Are you his? Well, amen. He's redeemed you from losing anything. He's redeemed you from loss. He's exempt you from loss. You don't have to accept loss in any facet or area of your life. Why? Because Jesus has saved you from loss. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Woo, boy, this is a word tonight. I'm so excited. I can't wait for what the Lord's going to share tonight. Amen. Woo. Glory. I've been all day today. We've been fasting and praying. Amen. Before the Lord, waiting on him, looking to him, basking in his presence, praising him and worshiping and thanking him for the great things that he's done. Amen. For the great things that he's doing and for the great things that he's committed to do. Glory be to God. You know, we live in greatness. I said we live in greatness. 
If you ain't living in greatness, you ain't living in Jesus. Amen. You may be living in religion, tradition. Amen. Glory to God, your past and amen, all of that. Philosophy, vain deceits like Colossians uh, uh, chapter 2. Amen. Glory to God. It tells us, amen, in verse 8, let no man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Amen. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, verse 5, he said, uh, amen, that there'll be some people that I have a form of godliness, but no power. Amen. See, if the Jesus you're working with, if he ain't reproducing himself and doing something for you, amen, it ain't the Jesus that the Bible talk about. Amen. It ain't the one that God sent. Amen. Because the Jesus that God sent and the Jesus that God, amen, talk about in the Bible is the Jesus that do something for you. Mm. So if your doctrine and your knowledge of God and Jesus ain't reproducing him, the one that do something for you, amen, then your knowledge of him is inaccurate. Amen. Glory to God. And that's why the Lord, amen, want us to put value on his word again. He, he, he want us to allow his word to indicate to us who he is and what he promised to do and what he's committed to do. Not what we going through, what other people don't say it, our bad experience. No, the word. Amen. Because the scriptures can't be broken. Glory be to God. And all that put their trust in Jesus, Romans 10 verse 11, cannot be put to shame. Mm. Glory to God. Now, let's get into this word tonight. Amen. The, the Lord has really, really, really been ministering to me. Amen. On, a, on several things. Amen. Tonight, we're going to, amen, uh, look at, you know, a couple of things in connection with uh, the prophetic agenda that he's been speaking over us as a ministry and as a whole, amen, as the body of Christ. Amen. The Lord told me, he said uh, tonight, amen, that uh, that apostolic anointing and office that I'm functioning, it's going to go forth. It's going to speak, amen, in the lives of his people. So tonight, I'm functioning in that apostolic anointing. Amen. It's a more authoritative anointing. Amen. Glory to God. It's aggressive. Amen. It it it, it just remove every excuse for living in defeat. Amen. It supplies solutions and answers to all your crises. It helps you to hear from God, receive from God, discover what he called to do, and then it equips you to do it. That's that apostolic anointing and grace that's up on my life. The Lord put it up on me. Amen. And he told me, he said, it, it's going to function and operate these, 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 in these times, aggressive times demands an aggressive faith, an aggressive word. Amen. You, you can't live in these kind of times with a passive word. Amen. And what degree and level of word that you have is determined by your appetite and desire for the word, your hunger for it. Jesus will never feed you the word beyond your hunger. In Matthew 5, verse 6, he said, Blessed are they who thirst and hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. He's only going to fill you to the degree of your hunger. Amen. Look there in Mark chapter 4, verse 33. The Bible said, Many such things he spake to them by parables. And without a parable, he spoke not to them. Amen. And he spake unto them according to their ability to hear it. He'll never go beyond your ability to heal. Mm. Glory to God. Never go beyond your hunger, your thirst for the word. Amen. And see, many Christians, they, they, they don't understand that, that God's interaction in their life is based upon their hunger for the word. Amen. And there are four types of diet of the word of God. Amen. There's the, the water of the word. Ephesians 5, 26, washing them with the water of the word. 
Amen. That's the water degree. And then, amen, there's the milk degree. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, what is that? First Peter chapter one, verse 20, 22. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. See, they have a milk hunger. Amen. And then, amen, they have a, 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 a meat hunger. Amen. Paul said in first Timothy, I'm sorry, first Corinthians three. Amen. Verse one through three. He said, I came, amen, to feed you with meat, but you have need of milk. Amen. See, they should have grown beyond the, the milk and they should had arrived to the meat hunger of the word of God. Amen. And then that's the strong meat. Woo, glory to God. That's what lions eat. Amen. And we're the lions of Judah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible says, amen, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, up until now, you should be teachers, but you have need of meat. He said, I came to uh, uh, milk. I came to feed you with strong meat. Amen. But you need that one teach you again the first principles of God. And see, here's the thing about it. Amen. Many people have have meat and strong meat challenges in situations. Amen. But they have water and milk diet and hunger for the word of God. See, their hunger is, is, is water and milk, but their problems is meat and strong meat. So how can God intervene unless you increase your hunger, your thirst, your desire? Whew, glory. Hallelujah. Then he can accommodate, amen, your situation. Then he can respond and intervene and attend to your concern. So that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to grow and develop your diet just like a child. Amen. Glory to God. There are times when you feed a child milk and water, but then as he grows, amen, you train him, amen, to eat solid food and then to eat on his own. Glory to God. What if his child, amen, 10 year old, still running around with a fool in his mouth, amen, with a bottle, crying, wanting a bottle. You think there's something wrong with him, man. You know, you should have been off that bottle by now. And that's the way it is in the church, in the body of Christ. Many Christians don't have a hunger, a thirst for the, they, they thirst and hunger for the word is traditionally trained, religiously trained, situationally trained. Amen. Glory to God. Instead of spirit trained and developed. Glory to God. And many pastors, they feed them the milk and, and water and nihilators and junk food. Amen. Trying to make them happy and accommodate their situation. No, you got to feed the sheep. That's what the Bible tells us. Amen. In first Peter chapter five, verse one through four, it said, feed the church of God, feed them in Acts 20. Amen. Glory to God. In verse 28, Paul tells the elders of the church of Ephesus, take heed to the flock over the which the Holy Ghost made you overseers and feed the flock. Feed the flock. Woo, glory to God. I remember the Lord spoke this to me. He said, a church of people that's adequately fed is a church and a people that's adequately led. Hmm. He said, if you will feed them, I'll lead them. Glory to God. Amen. And God's objective in feeding us is to lead us. He can't lead us until he feed us. Whoa, glory to God. And when he get to lead you, Psalms 23 tells you where he's leading you. Amen. In paths of righteousness, in green pastures. Woo, glory to God. In peace and prosperity. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Amen. See, he's trying to get us to walk in that sonship. Amen. Glory to God. So we got to increase and develop our appetite and hunger for the word of God. 
Amen. It's like changing your diet. Amen. Glory to God. There'll come a time where you get of age and maturity. It's time to put away certain foods. Amen. And eat, and eat other type of foods. Why? Because they belong to that certain season of your life. There was a time when you could go to those churches and, and, and they could preach you happy. Amen. And, and make you feel good. And you know, but you know what? Amen. That season of your life has ended. Now you need some principles. Now you need some revelation. Now you need some meat and strong meat. You need some potatoes and green beans and some meat. Hallelujah. Something that's going to stick with you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when you go to work and challenges hit you. Glory to God. You need more than some songs and some hymns. Amen. And, 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 and it's going to be ah, just home and, and Jesus. No, you, you need some more. You need something that's going to answer the devil and drive him out. Amen. Glory to God. So it was all right and appropriate for that time in your life and that part in season. But now we're living in some aggressive times. Amen. And it requires us to have an aggressive hunger and diet for the word of God. Amen. Glory to God. So I'm just setting the tone for what the Holy Ghost is going to minister to us tonight. So I want you to say it here business-like, attentive, amen, because you're doing business with your soul. You only hear one time, and there's only one of you, and you're here for something great. I said you're here for something great. Amen. Jesus was thinking greatness when he saved you. I said he was thinking greatness when he saved you. Amen. The Bible says in John 14, verse 12, Amen. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also and greater and greater works than these shall he do. Why? Because I go to the Father. Whoa, glory to God. See, he's thinking great greatness and greater. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 40. God has provided something greater for us. Woo! Glory. He got something great. Not mediocre status quo. Just hanging in there, girl. I'm just trying to. Uh-uh. You need to get in Jesus and get out of you. You need to get rid of your own opinions and let the word inform you. Amen. Jesus saved you. Amen. To do something great. He put greatness in you. The Bible says, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The one in you is greater than what you're facing. He greater than sickness, greater than disease, greater than poverty, greater than lack, greater than worry, greater than... He greater! And he living in you, trying to reproduce himself to you. <laughs> Glory to God. And as a man thinker, so is he. Amen. You are a product of greatness. Great potentials are in you. Glory to God. You're packaged with greatness. I said you're packaged with greatness. I said you're packaged with greatness. Jesus kept you alive so he can do greater things for you, through you, amen, and in you. Woo, glory to God. He didn't keep you alive so you could barely make it and put up with everything and accept defeat. No, he kept you alive so you can have an encounter with him for greatness. Woo, glory to God. That's what he designed prayer for. Amen. You see, you got to let the Bible define to you the purpose of prayer. Not what you're going through, your situation, your tradition and religion. No, let Jesus do it through the word. Look at Jeremiah 33, verse 3. I'm telling you, the apostolic coming on me, y'all. Listen to this. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you what? Mediocre status quo, bare men. No, I'm going to show you how to barely make it, how to get by. No, I'm going to show you great and mighty things what you know it's not. Whew. If you don't want to see nothing great, don't pray. Amen. Because God orchestrate, designed prayer so he can show you great and mighty things. Whew. Every time I go in prayer, I'm looking, anticipating to see something great and mighty. Woo! Why? Because that's where he's committed to show me these things at. Oh, glory to God. 
You ain't going to see those things outside of prayer. Amen. You ain't going to see those things outside of meditating in his word. You're not going to see great and mighty things without keeping company with people who are in fellowship with Jesus. You ain't going to see no great and mighty things. Amen. If you are a commercial church goer. Woo. These are the settings that he show you great and mighty things at. It's in church, in the sanctuary. Amen. In his word, by his spirit, in prayer. Glory be to God. And we have to embrace and engage these settings, amen, to be exposed to, to great and mighty things. Amen. Look there with me. Some of you, you choking on the church part. I know it. Spirit of God told me. You are all right with the word and prayer and the Holy Ghost. But when I got to the church, that being a setting where he show us and expose us to great and mighty things, you choked on that. But I'm going to show you. Look there in Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Man, I tell you, the Lord got me all over the place today. Hey, man, I, I had a couple things I was seeing that I thought we were going to share on tonight. But he's leading me in this direction. We may get to it, but I'm just following his lead. Amen, because we're living in an aggressive time, y'all, and we need an aggressive word. We need to let the word of God, by the spirit of God, inform us of who we are and God's dealings with us. Not our past, not tradition, not religion, not what we're facing. No, we in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're, we're programmed, amen, by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We got his DNA. We engrafted in him. We're one with him. We're receiving from him. Woo, glory be to God. Woo, for the Holy Ghost on this tonight. Amen. Now notice here, Psalm 63. Notice what David said. He said in verse one, God, thou art God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for thee. See, look at his appetite. Look at his appetite. Look at his hunger. My flesh thirsts for thee. Amen. My soul longs for thee. As in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Look at verse 2. To see. To see what? Your power and your glory. So have I seen well. Where did he see it? The sanctuary. Glory be to God. Keep on missing church. Amen. You're going to miss seeing something great and mighty that belong to your destiny. Amen. Glory to God. God has appointed certain things that he'll show you that's great and mighty in that sanctuary. Amen. Amongst the assembly of the saints. Whew. That's where we see great and mighty. But even though you go to church, you could be going traditionally or religiously in a form Amen. But not by revelation, not knowing what you there for, knowing what belong, knowing what what's in that setting, what's programmed for you there. Whew. I go to church just like I go to grocery store, like I go to school. Amen. I'm hunting instruction. I'm hunting a product. Woo. Glory to God. Amen. I don't go to school to feel good. I don't go to the grocery store to feel good. I go there to get a product. I go to school to get instruction. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to, amen, get a degree, get decorated for my destiny, get informed, get equipped for what I'm called to do. And that's how I go to church. Amen. To get a product of greatness, to get equipped to walk in it. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Now watch this. Look at David. Watch what he prayed. I wasn't even going in this direction. But I'm telling you that apostolic is strong on me tonight. Amen. Jesus trying to get rid of your excuses for living in defeat. Blaming others. Depending on the government. Amen. And other people except him. Glory to God. He's the only one that's committed never to leave you or forsake you. Whew. And if he ain't leaving you and forsaking you, nor is greatness. <laughs> Glory to 
glory to God. Hey, man. Woo, we got something remarkable program for you to do while you here. Hey, Amen. Even the way he formed this body and made you up is great. Psalms 139 verse 14. He said, I will praise thee. Why? Because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And my soul knows right well. Don't let what you're going through devalue you. Take color off of you. Woo, get in his word. Find out who God made you in Christ and walk in that. Live in that. Have your being in that. How you do that, Pastor? By what you think, what you say, and the company you keep. Mm. Why is the company you keep so important? Proverbs 13, verse 20. It says, amen, that, that a, a, a wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. So the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Mm. Glory to God. I remember when the Lord dealt with me about becoming a businessman. You know, and, and uh, we entered into the janitorial cleaning business in 1993. Amen. I started with a pawn shop buffer, floor machine. I used to have to go to Kroger's and rent, amen, my carpet cleaning uh, machines and equipment. Amen. Glory to God. But the Bible says in Job chapter 8, verse 7, though your beginning was small, your latter end shall what? Greatly increase. Woo! While I was going to Kroger, I was going armed with that Job 8, 7 on my mind. My latter end going to greatly increase. Yeah, my beginning is small. Woo! I don't even have money to get business cards. Amen. Glory to God. I don't even have it to get equipment on my own. But God said that my latter end shall greatly increase. Oh, glory to God. So I knew I needed three things. Number one, I needed instruction. Amen. Number two, amen. Glory to God. I, I, I needed right relationships. Amen. I needed a church, a man of God that would feed and nurture those greatness potentials that was in me. Woo! And then number three, I knew I needed to make right choices. Glory to God. Choose you this day. Who you going to serve? As for me, we going to serve the Lord. I knew I had to make right choices. So I started with a pawn shop buffer. Four years later, I ended up with 108 employees being the largest janitorial service in Nashville, Tennessee. God used us for a reference point to other janitorial services. Amen. Glory to God. Didn't know no black company, no African-American company had any large government contracts. We were the first one that serviced those skyscrapers downtown. Woo, we was the first one to service NES. Woo, Nashville Electric Sir. We kept that contract for nine years. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Though our beginning was small, our latter end greatly increased. Why? Why did it greatly increase? Because we allow God, what he said in his word, what he did for us in Christ, amen, control what we thought, said, and did. We let it control the company we kept. Amen. I remember, amen, glory to God. The Lord told me, he said, son, greatness is your portion. You're packaged with greatness. You're packaged with greatness. You're packaged with great. He kept telling me that, telling me that, telling me that, telling me that. You're packaged with greatness. If it ain't great, it's not your portion. Woo, glory to God. And then I let the Bible describe to me what greatness was. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater. Woo! Glory to God. Let Jesus be the reference point of greatness. Not my comp competitors. Amen. Are those naysayers and haters? No. I let Jesus be the reference point of what greatness is. I let him tell me the process of becoming it. Mm. Glory to God. Woo! Glory be to God. Now watch this. Watch this. Now I knew 
Amen. In order to become and do something great, I had to keep company with, with greatness. I had to find getting circles around people. Amen. That were thinking greatness. Amen. Glory to God. That's what happened with Elizabeth and Mary. Amen. Glory. Jesus had prophesied, the angel Gabriel had prophesied something great to them. That they were going to be impregnant supernaturally. Woo, glory be to God. And the ones that they were impregnant with was, going, was programmed for greatness to do something great. Something exceptional, rare, and extraordinary in the earth. Woo, so they had to get in each other company. Mary went down to Elizabeth house and they both got to prophesying greatness over each other. And she said in, 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 in Luke chapter 1, verse 45, Blessed is she that believeth, for there should be a performance of the things that were told her from the Lord. Woo-hoo-hoo, glory be to God. Amen. So the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Amen. You know, you know, the uh, few, you know, uh, weeks ago, you know, I was, you know, with some politicians and so forth. We were talking about, uh, you know, the, the what's happening with the youth and how to overcome these things and what ministry settings we can put in place to, to help the youth. Amen. Uh, 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 you know, how, how reprogram them, so to speak, or overcome the challenges that they're going through. And uh, so they, 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 they start blaming, you know, the. The government, President Trump, the white people, all this kind of stuff. I said, hold up. Hold it. Hold it. Jesus said, this is what he said. Woo, glory to God. Jesus said, whosoever cometh to him and hear it, what he say, and do it, he going to liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon the rock. The rain descended, the floods came, beat up on it. And it fell not. Jesus said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself. Woo! Glory. Received us in the favor with himself. Glory to God. Amen. And Jesus said, amen. Glory to God. Amen. You are my friend if you do what I say. And Jesus said, whatsoever you agree and touch on earth as praying and asking the Father, he will do it for you. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth should be loosed in heaven. Woo, glory. That's what Jesus said. So that put an end to the blame game. That put an end to making excuses. Just hear what Jesus said and do it. Woo, and he'll make you a whole new creation. Woo, he'll make all things be of God. Woo, he'll connect you to the greatness and the greater one. And he'll reproduce himself through you. And he'll make you a reference point to others to say to them, they don't have no excuse. Why? Because there ain't no temptation that is taking man that is not common to man. That God with the temptation will make a way of escape. Ask that prostitute Rahab. Amen. Glory to God. She had an opportunity to do what God instructed her to do. And she hid the spies. Woo! And got her destiny redeemed. Amen. As Mary Magdalene, she was possessed with all kind of devils. She seized the opportunity to hear what Jesus say and do it. And she got delivered and set free. As, amen, the ten leprosy who came to Jesus and he told them, go show yourself to the priest. And they were delivered and healed and made whole. As Peter, after that bad fishing experience, after he did what Jesus said, what was the outcome? Oh, glory to God. So we don't have no excuse for living in defeat. And he the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's not a respecter of persons. But he is a respecter of those who hear and do what he say. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Think about it. When Jesus was challenged with the devil in Matthew chapter 4, three times he referred to de the devil to what was written. It is written. It is written. It is written. See, he kept sticking with what was written, not his own opinion, not his past, not what people were trying to do to him, his persecutors and haters, not how he grew up. He was referring to what was written when you're dealing with the devil. 
You're not dealing with a white man. Or you're dealing with a devil. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness. We can't blame them. Amen. It's the devil. And Jesus tell you how to overcome him. Whom resists that fast in the faith. Where you going to get some faith from? From what's written. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Amen. I'm just talking to you, y'all. I want you to get so dissatisfied with status quo, bare minimum, and accepting defeat. Amen. If there's anybody who, who should have accepted defeat, amen, and, 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 and gave up and surrendered and threw the white flag, amen, it's me. Amen. But I kept letting Jesus inform me. Amen. Of who I am, what he promised, and his faithfulness and commitment to do it. But to every promise, there's a God with side and a man with side. Amen. You got to do more than pray. You got to get in his word. Prayer and the word go together just like water and wet. They inseparable. I pray all the time. That's you talking to God. When he going to get to talk to you? When you get in his word. A good relationship is when two people get to talk. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now watch this. Now, Jesus told the devil, it is written. It is written. It is written. The devil couldn't take him off of what, from what was written. Amen. Because the scriptures can't be broken. Even Jesus, he... He couldn't break the scriptures. In, in Matthew 26, verse 53, when he was on the cross and they was mocking him, if you be the son of God, if you be the one sent from God, if you be the Christ, come down off that cross. And Jesus said, listen, because he was so committed to fulfilling the scriptures because they can't be broken. He said, I could call for 12 legions of angels and get me off this cross. But then he said something startling after that. He said, if I did that, how can the scriptures be fulfilled? Woo! Glory be to God. Amen. See, we got to learn how to deny ourselves things, certain people helping us, so the scriptures can be fulfilled. Woo! I remember when I first got out of prison, people were running to help me, but I wouldn't let them help me. Why? Because they would have kept the scriptures from being fulfilled. They would have trained me to depend on them instead of on Jesus. I wanted to have an experience with the real Jesus, the Jesus that do something for me. Woo! Glory to God. So I had to come under him and sit at his feet, and I had to learn of him. Woo! Glory to God. And he gave me rest, y'all. He said, take my yoke upon me. Learn of me. It take time to learn. It take initiative. It take dedication, devotion. It take commitment. Amen. Go, you, you went to school, didn't it take discipline? Didn't it take taking the initiative, the responsibility? Could nobody go to school and pass and get grade for you? No, you had to go and sit in that classroom yourself. So it's the same way with this word. Woo, glory be to God. You got to take the initiative to learn of Jesus. You got to take the responsibility for your situation. Amen. Jesus told the devil, it is written every time. And then the devil, woo, ha, 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 woo. Finally, he said, it's also written. Woo, glory to God. Now, the, if the devil can refer to what's written, Jesus referred to what's written. Why can't we refer to what's written? Woo! Even the devil let what's written be a reference point. Why are we going to let sickness and disease, what we're going through, poverty, struggle, the, all this economic crisis and uproar and viruses, why are we going to let that be the reference point and replace what's written when even the devil who causing it refers to what's written? Why can't we, the body of Christ, refer to what's written and let it be a reference point to determine how things going to turn out and what we hear here for? Woo, glory be to God, y'all. This is awesome tonight. 
Amen. Not because I'm preaching the spirit of God in the office I'm functioning in. It's grace on this apostolic office. Amen. And my assignment is to get rid of every excuse for living in defeat. I don't care what you, you know, and when I say I don't care, you know, I do. I have compassion. But it doesn't matter what you're going through, been through, what others are doing. Listen, all you need is a word. That's all you need. Look at the woman at the well in John chapter 4. She had five failed marriages. And the man she was living with now wasn't even my husband. She was the mockery. The, 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 the discussion at every dinner table. She was the gossip of all fellowships. Amen. She was a reference point for shame and reproach. Whew. But boy, she had an encounter with Jesus at that well. And she left her water pot and she went to that city and told every man. I done met a man who done told me everything. And he right. Woo, glory be to God. He done told me how to worship him. He done told me how to serve him. He done told me what he here for. And he done told me what he can do in my life. Woo, so my past don't matter. Them five husbands don't matter. The one I'm living with now don't matter. What matters is the man that I met and what he told me. Woo, glory be to God. And she changed that whole city with her testimony. Woo, he took away all her excuses for living in defeat. And she was a Samaritan woman. By race, she was an outcast. Woo, glory, she was considered a dog. But she didn't let her race be a reference point to determine the great things she was going to do in the earth. No, she, met the, she let the man that she met at that well determine that for her. Woo, glory be to God. Man, pray. God, I feel like shouting, running around the room tonight. Woo, I wish I had the praise and worship team here. Boy, I tell you, we'll break off in a praise and a song. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, I got the victory living inside of me. I got the greater one. I can overcome. This ain't no time to turn back. No place to grow slack. I got to keep pressing on until the battle is won. Woo, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, all right. We got to get we got to get finished. Now, man, the Lord changed this sermon tonight. This is awesome. Amen. If we could have a title for this sermon, it would be called I'm packaged with greatness. I'm programmed for greatness. Whew, glory to God. I'm reproducing greatness. Why? Because the greater one lives in me. Mm. Glory to God. I'm walking in this greatness, living in this greatness, Woo. abiding in this greatness. I never come out of greatness. Why? Because the greater one lives in me and he don't come out of me, but I got to let him out. I got to cooperate and participate with him with how I think. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh, so is he. See, Joseph kept thinking that he was great. So how his brothers treated him, how Pharaoh treated him, how, the, how Pharaoh's wife treated him when she lied on him. Amen. How the baker and the butler treated him. Amen. Glory to God. It didn't change the way he think. He kept thinking, I'm great. And I'm here to do something great. I'm packaged with greatness. And you know what? He went to bed a prisoner, an outcast, a reproach, shame. But he woke up, woo, a prince of a whole nation. Woo, he woke up to his greatness. And the Bible says in Psalms 30, amen, verse 6, weeping may endure but a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Oh, glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. It don't take God long. You're the product of one day. He took one day to make you great. He don't take a week to, to, to perform on it, to manifest. No, you're the product of one day. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we should all be changed. Glory to God. Woo! As you hear in this word, you, your thinking is changing. You're shifting in your thinking. There's a shifting and a lifting. Amen. 
You letting the scriptures, what Jesus say, be your reference point, not what you're going through or facing. No, it may be a fact you're going through that, but it ain't the truth. The truth is what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. Woo, glory to God. And the truth can change your fact. Ask the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, starting in verse 25. Woo, glory to God. She had a bad experience, 12 years. Issue of blood. Sought the doctors. Spent all she had. Nothing better, but rather grew worse. But when she heard of Jesus, woo, she no longer let that be a reference point. She let what Jesus said in promise. She came in the press by, touched the truth garment, and she felt in her body that she was made whole of that plague. Woo, and Jesus turned, amen, because he felt virtue go out from him. And he asked, who touched me? And the woman fearing and trembling. Woo, glory to God. Amen, the Bible says she came and told him all the truth. The truth nullified, canceled her facts. And they could do the same for you. If you cooperate and participate with it in how you think, what you say, and the company you keep. Whew, glory to God. See, the company you keep is breeding grounds for the truth. It's like an environment of sun and rain to the plants and the trees. Amen. See, you can take certain trees and put them in wrong environments and they'll die. And it's the same way with your great potentials that's in you. Relationships, either feed them or kill them. Mm. Settings, either feed them or kill them. Not coming to church. Staying away from the house of God, the man of God, the word of God. It, it, it's wrong environments to this greatness. It's not going to nurture it and develop it. Whew. Glory to God. Now watch this. I asked the Lord, Lord, give me a reference point of what greatness is. And he took me over here. He showed me Matthew 11, verse 11. Notice, he referred to greatness to John the Baptist. Amen. Look at Matthew 11. Look at verse 11. And he said, Truly I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. So he's using John the Baptist as a reference point to greatness. But he didn't stop there. Watch what he said. But he that is least in the kingdom is greater than him. <laughs> Got greater potentials than him. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. And you letting what you're going to determine your state and status instead of what's written. Look at these great potentials. I said, look at these great potentials. I said, look at these great potentials that are in you. That are in you. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 31, the kingdom of God is within you. See, quit looking out here and start looking in here where Jesus is and let him and what he said be the reference point. Glory to God. He said, your greatness exceeds that of John. Well, I ain't a preacher. Or teacher. Yeah, you in the kingdom. If you're born again, if you're saved. Woo, and the kingdom is in you. Those great potentials are in you. He said, the kingdom of God doesn't come with observations. Amen. He said, what's that? Luke 17, 21. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. Glory to God. Now, what do I have to do? Amen. To cooperate with him. Oh, glory to God. In manifesting this greatness. I'm glad you asked. Number one. Amen. Bold declarations. Bold prayers and declarations. Bold prayers and declarations. I said bold prayers and and declarations. Look what David prayed in Psalm 71. Look at verse 21. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. See, that was a bold declaration. Whew. Bold prayer. Increase my greatness 
comfort me on every side. Woo, glory to God. David said, I'm great. I've got great potentials in me because the greater one lives in me. He said, but increase me in that. Increase me in that. Increase my understanding of the greater one that's in me. Woo, glory be to God. Are y'all seeing this today? I said, are you seeing this today? Number two, the second way to cooperate with the Lord in producing or reproducing these great potentials in you. Amen. Career-wise, business-wise, ministry-wise. In your role as a mother, father, husband, wife. Whew. Glory. Amen. Greatness is supposed to be expressing itself. Woo. Number two, I have to be a lover. I have to be a lover. And love is a choice. Love is what we owe people. Owe no man nothing but love. Romans 13, verse 8 and 9. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Woo, glory to God. Well, how is love look, is, is, is reproducing greatness in me? Look there with me to 1 Corinthians 13. Amen. Look at verse, I think it's in verse uh, 13. Amen. He said, now uh, there appeared faith, hope, and love. Maybe in verse 11. Amen. And the greatest, the greatest, the greatest of these is what? Love. Whew. See, when you walk in love, when you choose to love, independent of how you feel, you reproduce these great potentials in you. When people oppose you, reject you, come against you, and you choose to love them and will good to them and pray for them and bless them, these great potentials are being reproduced in you because the greater... It's the love. Woo, the greatest of these. It's either greater than hope. It's greater than faith. Love is greater. And it'll keep you connected to greatness. I said it'll keep you connected to greatness. I said it'll keep you connected to greatness. And then number three, the third way, is by increasing your appetite for the word. Increasing your appetite. For the word. Watch this. Look at Philippians 3. The Holy Ghost just giving me this, y'all. I'm telling you, this is apostolic anointing on me. I, I, I give God all the glory, honor, and praise. I wasn't thinking this up. I could never think something like this up. It's got to be the Spirit of God. And He's trying to transform our thinking to conform us not to the world, but to Him. Glory to God. As he is, so are we in the world. Woo, 1 John 4, 17. Was he great? Yeah, so are we. Well, when we get to heaven, no, in the world. Glory to God. Look at John 17, verse 18. Jesus said, as the Father sent me into the world, so have I sent you. Woo, how did God send him into the world? Packaged with greatness. <laughs> How did he send you? Packaged with greatness. Amen. You just got to make bold prayer declaration. Lord, increase my greatness. And then you have to be a lover. And then you have to develop your hunger for the word. Amen. And this is Paul. Notice here in Philippians 3. Amen. We'll skip over a few verses. Look at verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yet doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellences. See, he's looking for something greater. He's looking for a greater component of the word. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. You've been stuck in that church, in that setting. I ain't condemning it. Say, but I'm telling you, your appetite should have grown farther than it has. Your problems, situations, circumstances, responsibility, it's all growing. So your appetite for the word should be growing. Paul said, look, man, I done exhausted the word for those things that I already achieved, but I know it's greater things programmed for me to do. So I need an excellent knowledge. I need a more excellent and greater knowledge of Christ. So where that at? Where that setting at? Woo, look at that Ethiopian queen in Luke chapter 11 verse 31 the Bible says amen she was the queen 
Woo, glory to God. But the Bible says she came from the uttermost part of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And then he said, a greater one than Solomon is here. Woo. So I'm not looking at church or where to go to church based up on familiarity, my relatives and friends, grandmama and them grew up. No, I'm looking for that ministry that got that, that greater revelation, that greater knowledge. Whew. Glory. So I can connect with these great potentials that's on the inside of me. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I trust that this ministry has ministered to you today. Amen. Don't forget Amen. That if you've been taught in the word, amen, it's your responsibility according to Galatians 6, verse 6 to 8, to sow into the ministry that has taught you good things. Amen. The address, how to give, that information will appear on the screen. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Obey what Jesus say. Connect to what he promised. Reproduce him. Glory to God. Amen. The one that do something for you when you do what he say. Amen. The Bible says, amen. Let him contribute. Amen. To the one that taught him in the word. Amen. For as a man soweth, so shall he also reap. Amen. Glory, glory be to God. Woo. Woo. Glory to God. I make sure every month, my man of God, the one who taught me in the word, Pastor Charles Cowan, and also Dr. Sammy Holloway, I make sure, amen, glory to God, that they get honored. Amen. The Bible says that those who labor in the word, 1 Timothy 5, 17, let them be counted worthy of double honor. Amen. I make sure every month, don't let a month go by without ministering honor to them. Glory to God. Why? Because what they taught me in the word is still reproducing itself in my life. Woo. I'm a beneficiary of their revelation of Christ. Woo. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to let what's written inform me of how to deal with them, not how I feel. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. So many things coming up at the ministry. Please refer to our Facebook page and website so you can be adequately informed of the things that are coming up. Amen. At the ministry. We have such an awesome media ministry that prays and hears from God of what to put on our Facebook page. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, you can go on that Facebook page and you can receive a ministry, a quality ministry. Amen. Glory. I, I know I stroll down. <laughs> Amen. Every, every Tuesday, I stroll down on the Facebook and I get my faith fed and nurtured. Amen. Glory to God. So go to the Facebook page and receive your nourishment of the word of God and also discover all the events and different outreach components that we have coming up here at the ministry. Amen. Glory to God. And nothing else. You can just pray for us. Amen. All right. Then also this Thursday night. Woo. Bible study corporate prayer going to be awesome, y'all. Amen. Glory to God. If I were you, I wouldn't miss it. All right. And then tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., we back on the corporate prayer line. Glory to God. Receiving our supply of strength that keep us from fainting in this day of adversity. Amen. Look forward to you hooking on to the corporate prayer line. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's been my honor, my privilege to minister to you on tonight. I pray that your faith was fed and nurtured and built up in Christ. And now you're seeing the great potentials that are on the inside of you. And you're no longer allowing what you're going through, the color of your skin, or how people treated you, or how you grew up and the things that have happened to you be a reference point of what you're here to do. No, you're letting the scriptures and Jesus determine who you are and what you're here to do and how to do it. Amen. I look forward to celebrating these great testimonies. Amen. Of favor and our set time of favor. I decree favor over you. I decree excessive kindness, preferential treatment over you. I decree that the month of September will not end before favorable testimonies and praise reports come forth from you. In Jesus name is my prayer. Amen. I love you so much. My prayer is that God's riches and best be yours.